Thank you, and thank you for, uh, for saying that I could come talk about this today. Um, so basically, I left um, archaeology, I left my undergraduate degree 10 years ago now, um, and I was uh, one of the lucky ones. Um, I managed to uh, walk out of my undergraduate degree and get straight into a, a job in commercial field archaeology. Um, however, uh, in more recent years, um, since the recession, the downturn of the construction industry and so on, um, the number of units operating in the UK has decreased. I think competition for jobs has certainly increased. And uh, what units are asking for in terms of experience and skills um, has um, professional affiliations and so on um, is, uh, has had a knock-on effect on, on the kind of people that are able to get jobs in the commercial sector. Um, so what I'm really aiming to cover in this paper today is that um, in this kind of, I think it's a rather harsh jobs market at the moment in the commercial sector. Um, and what I decided I wanted to look at was whether um, UK archaeology degree courses are actually providing our undergraduate students with the knowledge and skills base that's necessary for them to be able to get a job in commercial field archaeology uh, relatively soon after university. Um, and also more to the point, um, are the archaeology students that we're turning out actually wanting to go into commercial archaeology as a career or, or are they wanting to go elsewhere? So, um, in order to try and look at this um, a little bit, um, I started by looking at the uh, top 10 university rankings uh, for the UK. This is a uh, data produced by The Guardian for 2013. I couldn't use the 2014 data because they combined archaeology and forensic science and the figures were a lot different. Um, so you can see here, um, highlighted on the side, we've got the top 10 uh, apparent UK archaeology departments uh, for 2013. And I think the most interesting figures on this slide, if you can see them, are the ones in the last column. Um, so that's the career after six months column. And what these figures show are the percentage of students who, six months after graduating, have managed to get a graduate level job, so a job requiring a degree, um, or they've continued in higher education by doing a master's degree or continuing on to a PhD or something like that. And so, as you can see, that um, the, the highest number that we get in that column is actually for Cambridge University. So 73% of the students from Cambridge University in that year managed to get a graduate level job. Um, we don't know whether they mean a graduate level archaeology job, I must, I must say, um, but they've got a graduate level job or they've continued on at university. Um, the lowest figure that we can see in this column is actually at Liverpool, which is uh, ranked as number nine, um, and that's only 47% of those students from that year managed to achieve that. Um, so what this actually also tells us is that for 2013, in the best case scenario in, in this top 10, 27% uh, uh, sorry, 27 of graduates still didn't manage to get a graduate level job or continued in higher education. Um, and, and a massive 53% of people graduating at Liverpool that year didn't manage to get a graduate level job or didn't manage to um, carry on in, uh, in further education. So I think in a time where undergraduate degrees can be costing people up to £9,000 a year, and that's not including, remember, um, living costs and, uh, and materials and things like that, um, I think we really have to ask ourselves if this is good enough. Um, and and, I, and it makes me wonder if archaeology, if, if these figures are coming out because archaeology students are not really being taught the requisite skills that they need to be able to get, um, to get jobs. So, uh, in order to look at this a bit further, um, I wanted to see what kind of skills and things um, archaeology units in this country were actually asking for um, when, uh, in, their, in their job applications. So, um, this is an extract here. I went and looked at uh, the Badger Jobs website and a couple of other places. Um, this that you can see on the slide um, is uh, an advert for a job by Cotswolds Archaeology. Uh, you can see that they're wanting uh, demonstrable commercial experience. Uh, they're also wanting uh, people to, oh, and I should point out as well, this is for a, a, a standard field assistant position, not a supervisor or a specialist or anything. Um, they're wanting people to have a minimum of six months experience working in one or more commercial British archaeological practices, um, as well as things like uh, being able to uh, record photograph features. Uh, they perhaps want a membership of the now CIFA, or the not IFA, is it there? Um, and things like a CSCS card, a driving license, and things like that. Uh, so there's, there's quite a few requirements there. Uh, just another one for map archaeology, you can see um, that they're asking for more than two months archaeological excavation experience, as well as a degree and a, and a couple of other things. Um, and then NAA, uh, in their job, uh, job <coughs> advert, are actually wanting um, at least six months British commercial experience uh, as well as proficiency in basic manual excavation skills, site recording, uh, CSCS card, and so on. Um, so these are just sort of three random examples, um, but I think what we can begin to see is that what UK commercial archaeological units are looking for is a minimum of several months' experience, 
Um, and a lot of the job adverts that I looked at when I was researching this actually stated specifically that they wanted people to have commercial archaeological experience, which implies that um, university re research and field school experience doesn't count, volunteer experience doesn't count, they're wanting people to have commercial experience. As well as uh, wanting ex experience recording and photographing and doing other things and, and CSCS cars and driving licences and so on. Um, so I think the question now, um, on the back of this, is are universities turning out students that have got these desired characteristics? So if we go back to the uh, top 10 universities that I looked at from the Guardian rankings a few slides ago, um, you can see that I've got on the side, so I've got the, uh, the university department, um, the amount of field work that is required for their undergraduate students to actually graduate, uh, whether or not that course has an associated fieldwork module, and then also I've put down some other uh, sort of core taught themes as well at those departments. Um, and you can see that um, by far um, the, the biggest amount of fieldwork um, that students need uh, to be able to graduate is at UCL. So they actually need to have done three and a half months of digging. Uh, on UCL field schools to be able to graduate. Uh, they also have to do a fieldwork portfolio and complete a field methods module. Um, however, when we look at the other departments, you can see that significantly less fieldwork experience is required. Uh, so York is the lead, which has only got um, three weeks required. Um, the average is about four or five weeks uh, digging experience, uh, quite often with an optional uh, field archaeology module as well at, at some point in there. Um, Again, obviously this is just a random sample of, uh, of universities in this country, uh, but again, I think considering how much practical experience is being asked for by commercial units, um, departments and oh, these, these um, um, amounts of fieldwork that are being uh, uh, offered to students, um, it's, it's not really anywhere near what's required for people to be able to get a job when they graduate. Um, I should point out that a lot of these universities do state as part of their courses that they recommend that undergraduate students go and find their own fieldwork opportunities and gain more volunteer experience themselves, um, but, but these opportunities have, have got to be found by the students, they're not necessarily provided by that department. Um, so after, after looking at these, um, I decided to see if, uh, if, this, if all these questions that I've been asking, if it's even really an issue, because obviously if there's no demand for a kind of professional standard um, fieldwork training by students, so if the students are not wanting to go into commercial archaeology as a job, then, then why should universities be expected to provide that standard of training? Uh, well, um, I, I took to social media, uh, so mainly Facebook and Twitter, and um, I asked under, current undergraduate students and recent graduates um, a, a variety of questions um, about um, archaeology, commercial archaeology as a profession. So firstly, I asked them, um, <coughs> what kind of jobs they wanted to have once they graduated. Um, and these are the responses that I got. So 91 students and recent graduates answered. Uh, you can see there that 35% um, um, did actually want to continue in academia. Um, a lot of them, uh, a lot of sort of frequently cited reasons for this uh, was that they thought that um, an academic career in archaeology provided more stability um, and better wages than if they were to go into commercial archaeology. Um, just under a third, so 31% of students, did actually want to go into commercial archaeology. Uh, so, and a lot of these people said they wanted to go into it because they just love fieldwork as well. So it's, it's nice seeing kind of differences in, in reason why people want to go in different directions. Um, only about 5% of people wanted to go work in museums. 22% uh, um, said they didn't mind what kind of area of archaeology they ended up in, so long as they had a career in archaeology. Um, and then 7% uh, didn't really want an archaeological career at all, they wanted um, to just have a, a nice archaeology degree and then go off and do something else. Um, so once I kind of established that, I went and asked the people who had graduated what they were actually doing now af after their degree, uh, and this is what I found. So 41% um, of people were actually um, continuing in academia, uh, so most of them were doing master's degrees, um, a lot of them had the aim of doing a PhD, and interestingly, most of these people actually said that they were heading down this route because they, some of them had perhaps tried to get a job in commercial archaeology and not been able to. They decided to go back to university to get a master's degree. Um, and the main reason why they were doing this is because they thought that getting another qualification in archaeology would make them more employable in the commercial world. 
So people were saying to me they thought they were more likely to get a job as a supervisor or a manager or as a consultant if they'd got a master's degree or a PhD. 22% um, of these people um, were working in commercial archaeology. A lot of these were in kind of trainee positions that I think we're seeing crop up more and more now um, for, for slightly lower pay than perhaps the uh, sort of standard field positions. Um, as well as this, we've got small numbers of people that were working in museums and community archaeology and uh, in the heritage industry, so places like English Heritage National Trust. Um, there were um, about 20% of these people uh, were not able to get archaeological jobs. They had tried, they'd not been able to get anything, and they were doing a variety of, of other things, but they were perhaps aiming to get back into archaeology in the future. Um, and then 8% of people had not been able to find employment at all. Um, so I understand that these are only quite small samples, um, but I think we're starting to see a few interesting patterns crop up. And basically, um, the kind of comments that I was receiving from people, combined with these figures that you can see on the slide, um, were suggesting that students are wanting to go into commercial archaeology as a profession. Um, they're applying for the jobs. If they're not getting the jobs, they're going back to university and getting more qualifications because they think that will make them more employable. Um, and so I think it is quite clear that something needs to be done to kind of help this group of people that are wanting to go into the commercial side of things and, and finding it really difficult and not being able to. Um, th there's obviously a demand for, for jobs in commercial archaeology from the kind of student faction. Um, so to try and see a little bit more about how we can maybe help them, um, I decided to go and talk to um, professional archaeologists working in the commercial sector currently uh, and maybe talk to them about how they felt that um, universities could change courses to try um, and, and help these students to, to get where they want to be. So, um, I should point out, I didn't give the commercial archaeologists any kind of tick boxes or anything saying, oh, would you, do you think that universities should do X, Y, and Z? I kind of gave them free reign to, uh, to come up with their own options about what they thought um, what could be changed or improved. Um, I had uh, 68 people reply, and uh, the sort of answers that I got could be roughly sorted into about um, seven different things. Um, so firstly, um, the thing that people mentioned most was that the commercial archaeologists thought that undergraduate students should get more field experience. They thought that fieldwork requirements at universities should be increased significantly um, and that there should be perhaps more optional opportunities available for those that wanted them. Um, Secondly, um, the commercial archaeologists thought that there should be much more emphasis on uh, practical skills in archaeology. Uh, so everything from how to use tools properly, to uh, laying out trenches and grids, through to uh, single and multiple context recording, um, and, and again, uh, that the emphasis should be on repetition of these skills to, to try and sort of hammer home uh, how you should be doing them correctly. It's no use showing somebody how to draw a section once and then leaving them and, and expecting that they'll just be able to remember that a year down the line. Um, thirdly, um, the commercial archaeologists felt quite strongly actually that, um, that the quality of training excavations at universities should be improved. Um, Many, uh, many people that I spoke to felt that the, the students were not being taught sufficiently well, they weren't being given uh, the best information, and therefore they couldn't really be expected to learn to their full capacity. Um, I've kind of combined the, points to, uh, the fourth and fifth points, because they're kind of similar, um, that uh, more emphasis should also be put on the importance of recording and on post-excavation. Uh, so that I did find there was a general view that um, it could be more useful to allow undergraduates the uh, opportunity to, to try tasks related to post-excavation work um, and also report writing. So maybe um, be getting students to, to write up site reports from context sheets that they've produced themselves on site. Um, and also this would, I think, help to hammer home to them the importance of recording in the field. Because having worked on student um, excavations, um, I know that sometimes um, they... I don't know, they, they get confused about context sheets and things. Um, sixth point, um, that uh, more commercial archaeology should maybe be brought in to help teach field skills because perhaps they've got more um, experience in, in that area than, uh, than their academic counterparts. Uh, and then the seventh point was that um, they thought that the students should be given more information on the realities of commercial archaeology. So things like um, the necessity of working to deadlines, time pressures, how units work, and, uh, and then more stuff related to getting driving licenses. Yes, yes, cards as well. Uh, and then because David's been waving the three minute card at me, uh, I'm going to kind of run quickly through my last slide. Uh, but where does this leave us? Well, um, 
I think obviously there, there is a demand for these undergraduate students, they're wanting to get into commercial archaeology um, and I sort of tried to come up with a few things that maybe we could do to, to help them uh, in this way. Um, I think firstly perhaps we could try, universities could try providing more field schools. Uh, when I suggested this on Facebook I was met with quite a lot of hostility from some students who wanted to take more of a, a kind of research path. You know people saying well um, I, I don't, I don't want to go digging for, for my career, so why should I be forced to take this? Or what are you going to cut out of my research degree to mean that I have to, so that I can have to go digging more? Um, and I'm not suggesting we do that, but maybe we just make sure that there are more opportunities provided for those that want them. Um, I think secondly, um, it's good the amount of fieldwork modules that universities are providing, um, but some of the students that I spoke to felt that the way that these were assessed was a little bit unfair. So perhaps they had to write um, an, an essay about the site they'd been working on, or there had been something like a, a reflective journal that they had to write that was then marked. Um, I think, again, it might be more productive to, uh, for students to be writing up reports based on their own context sheets or on context sheets from the whole site, uh, something like that. Um, a vocational route um, was also suggested. Uh, some of the commercial archaeologists uh, that I know have actually got into the profession by doing an HND. Um, I, I won't bang on about this because I think Amanda covered it really nicely uh, earlier on. But yeah, academic apprenticeships, work placement schemes, all that kind of thing is something that we could perhaps uh, look into. Um, and then interestingly, um, uh, some of the students that I spoke to um, had suggested extending archaeology degrees to four years with the uh, fourth year perhaps being a year-long work placement at an archaeological unit. Um, I think that, that might have a knock-on effect on, say, a, a research degree. If you don't want to go down the commercial route, would you want to do a three-year degree or would you try and bump it up to four? And There's obviously going to be extra costs involved and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if that's a solution. It's just a suggestion. But um, to kind of round this off, um, I think I've obviously not provided a solution to this problem today, uh, but I think that places like this are a really good to, uh, place to be discussed in uh, this issue. I think it is an issue that has the potential to affect the archaeologists of the future and the future of archaeology as a profession. Um, but I think what I perhaps highlighted most is that um, field work and field archaeology should definitely be taught to our undergraduate students as a thing that's of parallel importance to research skills. I think in far too many places it's been taught as kind of a supplementary skill and kind of like brushed to one side a little bit. You know, like they kind of get taught a, maybe a fieldwork module in the first year and then uh, nobody, you, you go off and do some more theory and methods and other things after that. Um, but without fieldwork and good quality fieldwork at that, how can we be expecting to produce all this good data to be able to provide interpretations and understand the archaeology and, and, and find out more about the past? Um, and anyway, I'm going to leave it there and let everybody kind of have a think about that. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Lauren. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Remember, questions. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. Um, <laughs> When you put your pie charts up, yes. it's quite clear that you had a. Oh, this isn't a very sticker, but it's obviously, I understand why you did have to hang in it. But it was obviously very biased sample because the vast majority of people who didn't want a career in archaeology hadn't either seen or responded to your survey. Mm. Um, and whilst I would, I would agree that the optional extra field work modules and optional four field degrees I have practiced, for example, um, are any good idea if you want to go into archaeology. We also need to remember that a significant proportion of archaeology students want to be developing professional transferable skills, communication, presentation, project management, those kind of things, which can be learned through field work but can also be learned through other modules as well. And increasingly for people who want to maybe get to consultancy or heritage curating and all those kind of things, those kinds of skills are equally important as well. So we need to make sure that we're not necessarily, as you say, privileging research skills over field work, but we also need to make sure that we are providing professional skills um, which are transferable and useful. For oh yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think that field work is just something that, uh, that sometimes it does kind of get uh, sort of brought in as 
studies, like a little bit of an aside. And, and I, I do understand that there are people that don't want to go into commercial archaeology, but um, but I think that um, yeah, we, we do need, we just need to get the balance right, and I don't think it is right at the moment. Uh, it's like second point, it's all three questions. But um, professional skills aren't just about picking holes, although obviously we do need to know where the stuff comes from and how it was retrieved. Well, no, I'm an osteologist <laughs> as well as a field archaeologist, so no, I totally get where you're coming from. Um, yeah. Why is it up to the university to provide the training? Why is it not up to commercial units? There are no other, or very few other industries where you are expected to be able to go into a job and to do that job from start to finish. You know, if you do a business degree, you don't learn how to run a business. You learn other things that would help you in that position. So why is it up to the university to provide fieldwork when actually it should be units who are helping to train people, surely? Well, yeah, I, I agree to a point. But if you were a business student, yeah, if you're a business student, yeah, you're not going to go into a first job and be running a business. In the same sense, an archaeology student's not going to be going and running an archaeological unit. No, but, but I think to work independently. I mean, when I, when I started, when I when I started as a field archaeologist, I was given a feature and told to dig it, and then told to record it. Now, you know, nobody helped me. Nobody did anything. I had to keep asking people, and I'd done at that point. I'd done. Um, at least two months field work through university. So I had a certain amount of knowledge, but there were other people who hadn't done that much, and we were all sort of thrown into a field, given features to do, and told to get on with it, with very little support. And I, I, just, I just think that but it doesn't. It doesn't have to be like that. Like if students, yeah, students, yeah, are, students are paying yeah. so much money to be at university now. I think it's really unfair that they're graduating and then they're still not being able to get a graduate level job. You need a degree to be able to get a job in archaeology, and yet these people that have got degrees have not got really basic skills like how to excavate or draw a section of a post hole or something because they only did two weeks field work three years ago and things like that. I think that uh, really the universities should be uh, training. Um, the archaeology students to, to have these basic, basic skills. I think, think that they should. But in five to six months commercial experience. No, I don't think it's necessarily reasonable for them to ask for six months commercial experience. Again, there needs to be a balance on both sides. Um, and this is where the gap between commercial archaeology and academic archaeology, it's, it, you can see it's a chasm. And these, these two sides need to talk to each other and figure out. Um, what, what we're doing now is clearly not working. People are coming out of university and can't get jobs. And I'm not saying that I've got a perfect solution for it. I'm saying that, that what we need to do is talk, is talk about it. In that thing where, it's the, where you said the, the, the pie chart, where you said that students were... Um, couldn't get jobs in archaeology, so we've gone back. Do you know why they couldn't get jobs? They uh, a lot of them had applied for jobs and they're not. Yeah, they they give many reasons why they weren't getting jobs. Yeah, when they, you know, they told you. A lot of it was because they'd not got enough experience. Yeah, because they uh, because I mean even like places that are wanting sort of two two months experience. If you're coming out of university, you've only got two, three, four weeks. It's still not enough. And, uh, and units, yes, yeah, some, some are offering training schemes now, but um, but there's obviously there's not enough jobs to go around. And, no, uh, there isn't. No. Not, you know, I'm well aware of that. You know, I work in commercial archaeology and I'm a PhD student, so you know, I, I can see it from both sides. But I just think it seems a little unfair to, to blame the universities um, for not turning out fully trained archaeologists when it's the only industry that you're expected to be fully trained when you come out of university. Mm. I think. Uh, one, two, three, if you all have questions, and you can all get a question and an answer for them within about three minutes in total, okay? So if you want to go first. Um, I wonder, we're talking about students being sent out into commercial archaeology and not having the skills to perform in commercial archaeology, and I, I consider myself to be one of those students. I was unfortunate to go through my undergraduate degree during the foot and mouth period, so my field work involved um, Taking rubbings off gravestones, <laughs> which hasn't been particularly useful in my career since then, as we said. Um, but what I really wasn't aware of as a student at the time was what the impact of that was going to be when I tried to get work. And I've been very fortunate that I have managed to get work. And every day I go to work and hope they don't realise that I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> but is it so not so much that we need to train our students more in, in field work, but that we need to explain to our students? what commercial archaeology is and what this because I think when I started my undergraduate degree I thought I thought field work was like research field work. Mm. I didn't know what commercial archaeology was and I don't think I realised it until I started, started working and spent months just watching a digger. 
and that's you know there there is there is a kind of differentiation between what the students think they're going to do yeah, and definitely. what the students end up doing and, and perhaps if more students were aware of where they were going in commercial archaeology yeah. they would make more informed choices about what modules they take what courses they take what they do with their, with their yeah um, and, and that was one of the things that was brought up by uh, some of the commercial archaeologists that i spoke to um, i think that because one of the other things that i used to do for this talk that i didn't i had to cut out because um, I, was, I was running well over uh, was that um, i asked a lot of the undergraduate students sort of what their opinions were about commercial archaeology and commercial archaeologists and a lot of them they they did a lot of them came out with things like oh well i've heard the pay is not very good and you know the working conditions can be bad and, and working on building sites and all sorts of things um, but a lot of them didn't actually know, uh, they, they didn't know anything about particularly working to deadlines. I think they did think it was just like a, a research excavation, when, and obviously it's not, it's very, very different. And uh, yeah, you, you're completely right. And I think that um, perhaps one of the things that um, it would be useful to point out to students so they can make a more informed choice about where they want to go is, uh, is a lot more about the reality of what it's like being a commercial archaeologist. Same question. How do you intend to, or do you have any suggestions for how we should bridge the gap between commercial companies that are asking for not six months of voluntary experience or experience in research things, but six months work of commercial experience mm -hmm. when we can't get jobs in commercial archaeology without that experience. If we haven't got that experience, how do we get those jobs in the first place? It's difficult. Um, I completely understand that. I mean, I think that probably um, with, with my commercial hat on, I think that um, I think commercial units would suggest trying to get a job on one of their training schemes, which there are there are available. Um, I know that um, universities a few universities now are starting to offer um, things like, I know at Sheffield University, which is where I've just graduated from for my PhD, um, I actually have an undergraduate programme where they do, they do do work placements with West Archaeology and I think a couple of other units maybe as well. Um, I, I don't know how many students actually take those on, I really don't. Um, I think that is perhaps more in the direction that things might end up going. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's a really difficult question to answer in those days. <laughs> But maybe that's one for the discussion later. Yeah. I'm sure David will want to jump in on that do one as well. Do you have a question that isn't discussion? I, I, I do have a sort of question. Um, I was probably, I wasn't on the table, but 2013 was the year I graduated and I actually applied for that Cotswold archaeology mm. job. I have about three months experience, probably two and a half, three weeks is commercial experience. Um, but yeah, I still got the job. Um, I don't, didn't have a CSCS card, I didn't have a driving <laughs> license. I was willing to commute by train every, every day for an hour up to Gloucester. And um, when I got there, I was shown how to excavate human remains for a couple of days. It was a Roman cemetery. So my question actually is, did you ask the question, are they setting themselves correctly? Or the company the, selling themselves, or the no, students the selling students themselves, right? Students who are for their job. I didn't actually ask that, no, but I think that that would perhaps be something to look into as because well, definitely. I had two job offers mm. in the same few days on my return from travelling, and it was literally, when can you start work? I have to make a decision before I even flew home. Um, and like I said, I had two and a half weeks commercial experience and two months research excavation experience. So it's, are they selling themselves correctly? I think that is a really good question and maybe that's another thing that um, maybe um, students could be or could be something that we could be telling students more at university, you know, if you are wanting to go into this as a profession, then these are the kind of things that you need to do. Um, yeah, um, also I guess um, with, with things like job applications, it's all, um, you do sort of need to take them on a case by case basis, obviously every yeah. job is different and you don't know how many people are going to apply and who those people are going to be who apply, and, but well, well done on getting a job anyway. <laughs> okay. and, and well, that's what, with that job as well, I was there two and a half months, mm. they were still struggling to build all the decisions. Really? So, it, 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 that's the issue, whether they are selling themselves correctly. Um, they employed, not that it's a bad thing, but they employed a lot of people from Spain and Poland because they were willing to travel and they obviously seem to sell themselves correctly. Well, maybe in that case then, maybe students are, uh, are applying for, for certain jobs and then not other ones because they don't think they've got a chance to get in yeah. them, but maybe they should be trying anyway and that's again something else that we should be letting them know, that they should be plugging away and plugging